Frosty Badgers on the red carpet. I, I mean, I, I love that. That's that, that sets the tone. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to write a speech down. I hired, hired a ghost writer to make me sound elegant. <laughs> Didn't do that. I told him I'll bring an empty paper up there so I can look at it and make someone feel better. I have something to say. So then I started drinking and figured, fuck it, we'll just uh, let it flow like it always does. Well, I mean, look, Dallas was a UFC Hall of Famer, right? I mean, I, I guess it's probably still soaked in a little bit, but I mean, how does that sound to you? It's surreal. It's so surreal, man. Like, through my career, you guys especially would always say future Hall of Famer, you know, and you just kind of like, oh, cool. Like, they're just saying that, right? Now here we are. It's sitting in. And it kind of concretes the legacy that I try to do through my career where when they call, I answer. And I show up and I fight, win, lose, or draw. On one week, two weeks notice, whatever, I came and I fought. And people knew that. And that was my legacy I wanted to leave behind. Like, if Cowboy's on the card, we are figuring out how to watch this fight. Even if he's the first fight of the night on the prelims, we're figuring out how to watch it. We're getting fight bats. We don't have fight bats. We're getting in. We're watching it because I became a fan favorite that they knew to throw down. And it's cool to be recognized for that. I wonder maybe somehow that's like a, almost a bigger legacy, right? Because like UFC champion, that's what everybody's trying to be, right? But that's one night. And then it's right. over, right? Sure. And then you said that all throughout your career. I want people to want to tune in to watch me fight. And I think you accomplished that. And now... This, this can't ever be taken away from you. You're one of the greats forever. I mean, is that almost a better legacy, you know? Like, okay, maybe I didn't get to exactly where I wanted to be, but guess what? I'm in the Hall of Fame, and people wanted to watch me fight every time I stepped in there. Nah, man, it's weird how you just saying that resonate, right? Like, everyone says when you're shooting for a goal, like, shoot for the stars, man, you know? Shoot for the moon. And I tried, but I ended up further than I wanted. You know? So yeah, everyone wanted to be a champ. Never in a million years did I think I want to be a Hall of Famer. Like that wasn't even in my, what I wanted to accomplish. So for you guys and everyone to vote and accept me and recognize me for that, it's motherfucking cool. Uh, <laughs> that's it for me. I mean, it seems like you got a nice new career going with Hollywood, but has there been one night since the night you hung it up where you're like, you know, Cowboy may have one more in him. Let me get in there and do this one more time. So I hold a kids camp every year. And um, we just had it a few weeks ago. 40 underprivileged children come out. We teach them life skills, teach them wrestling, jiu jitsu, how to train. And I'd go out there and we'd teach these kids wrestling. And, and I was like, man, is this going to give me the itch? Am I going to get, is it going to start a fire that I can't extinguish? And it didn't. And it didn't. And I went back home. I'm like, shit, it was time. Now, with that being said, I have two fights left. And to have 50 would be cool. Right? 50 would be a cool number. Not saying it's happening. <laughs> Not saying I'm itching for it to happen, but maybe one day it will. I mean, right now, all the good shit after the non-USADA approved shit, I feel like I'm fucking 21 again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm telling you guys, any of you fighters, when you're done, uh, Go ahead and get on the TRT and put your wife in a bind because that's going to be like an 18-year-old boy again. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there, is there any one fight you want to make me just add that? Razor Rob McCullough, WC. Yep. Said it all the way down the line. Like, to me, I remember he was the champ at the time. You know, he was the big fight in the WC. And I was always like, man, one day, one day. And then that one day became. And, uh... He fought me exactly like I thought he would, threw down. It was back and forth, back and forth, fighting, just gritting down. The fighters that are no longer around, you know, Razor Rob was one of those guys that would just stand in the phone booth and throw down. And I was super excited about that fight. My head hurt. I remember we had an after party and I'd just go lay down. My head was on fire, ringing. And I probably have long-term CTE because of that. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was, at the moment it was a good idea. <laughs> Oh, no, fuck no. Today I'm freaking out. When I got dressed up and we're sitting in the room and all my friends and family in there, kind of like fight day. And I'm like, shit, you just kind of sit around and you wait. Is it 4 o'clock yet? Oh, shit, it's 3.30. Time to get in the shower. Time to get changed. 
start walking down the hallway like, damn, this feels like I'm going to fight. Now I'm interviewing you fucking wild cunts and I'm, uh, so now I'm at, the fight's already over now, right? So we're good. But uh, yeah, the, the nerves came back and that is what I'm afraid of is gonna give me the itch, the scared nerves. So uh, if I had to tell the younger me, nah, baby, love it, embrace it, fucking enjoy those asshole puckering, scared to death feeling because you can't find those anywhere. I've tried. I've jumped out of planes. I've rode dirt bikes. I've jumped over everything I could find. I can't find that same feeling that makes me like, this is it. So, nothing touches it, except for again tonight. So who knows, maybe that might light the fire again. God damn it. <laughs> then you guys gotta talk to me again. <laughs> Cowboy, is this the last one? Fuck, I don't know, guys. So that, who's gonna be inducted? Uh, a good friend of mine, Bobby Steiner, which is like cowboy royalty. PBR, Ring of Honor, uh, National Rodeo Hall of Fame. His sons, his grandson, all are, I mean, hell, Yellowstone. Y'all watch Yellowstone? They put the motherfuckers in there, you know what I mean? So, when they asked me who I wanted to do it, I said, oh, no doubt, because, well, I'm not going to give it away. I'll talk about it on my speech, yeah. but, uh, yeah, that's some bitch cowboy. He, uh. He's a real deal, Holyfield. We were at that uh, BKFC event where Mike Perry fought, and he was saying, like, in interviews after that you were supposed to come in the ring and face off with him and not Connor. What, what all happened with that? Not a motherfucking thing happened with that. Did they ever, have they approached you at all? Yeah, of trying? course. And you're not interested in that? That guy tell you, and I tell them, you have to come up with a number so big, it would just entice me to get off my couch. I haven't done a thing since I retired except for movies drink beer and play with my kids so you have to come with a number so big listen you guys I uh, made great money in the UFC Dana White created me great I don't need the money I'm not itching because I need a couple hundred thousand dollars so it had to be such a crazy number I'm like eh fuck it I could use five million alright <laughs> 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 all right, I'll fuck find my grandma for five million you know what I mean so <laughs> Uh, kickboxing, I went 28, 28 no, professional kickboxer. Traveled to Japan, all over Europe. We would go get so fucking hammer drunk the night before the fights. And people would be like, you're fighting tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, and? I'm in, in Paris tonight. Like, what are you talking about? 18, 19 years old, this fucking party. Like, because we could drink back then, right? Like, that was, and in those countries, it was, so we were like, game on. And we'd spend the entire day of, of supposedly cutting weight just trying to fucking rehydrate to get my headache to go away. So um, those are the behind the scenes, young days of, hey, we're here, let's party. <laughs> oh, they are fighting. Oh. Both great guys. Uh, I also think Jim Miller belongs on this walk as well. So. Um, it was cool to end my career fighting him. The little fucker got me when I kicked him, bastard. Uh, no, what a what a great dude, man. Um, he always shows up to fight. He's been there. I mean, now he passed for the winningest motherfucker, right? God dang it. Two more, two more guys. <laughs> All right, guys.